Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a quick tip how we can use combo boxes to pull up records, retrieve records. Um, our goal as developers should always, always be to simplify the end user's life. Um, if we're not doing that, we truly are not doing our jobs. And one way to do that is to facilitate looking up, retrieving information. And to do that, one method, amongst many others, is to use combo boxes as search tools. So let's just open a demo database, which will illustrate all of this to you. Um, I have a very simple table here, some general information. All this information is bogus, by the way. Don't try the email addresses. They are not good. And the date of births that I've listed there are also incorrect. Um, but we have some, a bit of data to play with. Now, typically, when I go into uh, clients, many, many, many times, a vast majority of times, what I'll be handed over as a tool to start from or continue working from will give me things like this, a very basic forms, and sometimes much worse than even this. Um, so as you can see, it's just a form, and you've got record navigation. Now, if you've got three, ten records, it's one thing. But imagine a company with corporate contacts and you've got a hundred, you've got a thousand contacts, you've got a hundred thousand contacts. Uh, navigating this way just doesn't work. I know some of my clients in the past used to do control F and then they'd start doing searches that way. Um, but it's still far, far from ideal. And secondly, the user has to even be aware that that functionality even exists to begin with. You don't want to rely on hidden features, hidden functionality ever. So the first thing I do is I'm going to take that basic form and I'm going to improve upon it. Um, now, I know some of you right now are saying, well, that's not much of an improvement, but you'd be amazed how much adding a header and a footer makes at the end of the day. A header with a nice title and you're going to see why I have the header in just a moment when we move on to the next step. And a footer where we put our buttons, our actions. Then the user, if each form is always set up the same way, doesn't need to look around to figure out, ooh, where's the button this time? Um, they know that all the buttons for doing actions are here. They know that they can look right here quickly to get the title, which form am I currently on, and things like that. And you'll see in a second, they'll also know that if I look in the top section in the header, I'm going to find all my search functionality. So this is a step forward, but we're still not there, right? And that isn't the purpose of today's video. Today's video is how do we add search functionality? So I'm going to show you the final result, and then I'm going to show you how to get there. So the ultimate goal is to end up with something such as this, where what we do is we add up here in the header a search ability, and now when I click on whatever I select in the combo box, it brings that up to the user instantaneously. Okay. How did I do this? It's very easy. So let's take a look. So let's start by taking the improved version. Okay. And now let's call this final, uh, we'll call it here, just users bookmark. Okay. Or even better, let's just do user final. Okay, so we now have <clears throat> the basic framework layout to work with. Now, how do we add the combo box? Well, we add a combo box. So we take a combo box and we cut, we take a combo box and we just literally plop it into place. Okay, I cancel out all this. You give it the name you want. Search by name. I would then just position it. Um, I also do not like the default gray. So what I'd probably do right off the bat, I'd probably select everything and tell it use black. Then it's actually legible. The gray is horrible on the eyes. Now it's setting up a combo box like you always set up a combo box. First of all here, Control source. We don't want a control source. We're not binding this to the table. We don't want anything we do here saved. So we leave that blank. Row source. Now that is an important one. 
But what we're going to do, we, in this case, we're going to bind to the table that the form is bound to. So in this case, it's user. And then my first column is going to be the primary key, because that's what I'm going to use to retrieve, to perform the search. So you want to use an indexed field, an index column, and typically the best column to use for that is always going to be your primary key. Next, I would come in here and I would create, because I want to concatenate, um, actually, you know what, let's do the zoom box and you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, I, I'm going to want to create a um, concatenated field here. I could add the first name as a column, this last name as a column, but today I feel like I want to have them together as one. So I'm going to do first name, and then I'm going to concatenate with a space, and I'm going to concatenate again with the last name. Oops. So that will be my second column. And if we run it just as is, you're going to see it's ordered by the primary key. And that isn't very useful, okay? P people aren't going to be looking based on a user ID, uh, and they shouldn't at the very least. So let's keep going. Now we can add columns to apply to add our sorting. I want to sort it by first name and last name. And I don't need these shown. Okay, they're just there to apply a sort order. Now if we run it, it's ordered by first name and then last name. And that is perfect. So we'll close that out. Yes, I'm happy with that. I'm going to put my limit to list to yes, because they shouldn't be putting entries that don't exist. So I'm going to leave that as yes. And then I'm going to come to format. And I'm going to put it the column count. Well, in my case, I have user ID and I have user full name. So I have two columns. And then we have to put the column width. So I don't want the user ID to be shown. So I'm going to put zero. And then typically what you do is you come here and uh, you take the uh, width, let's say, and you could put it here. Okay. And we have the result we want, basically. So I'm just going to close it for a second. We're going to look at it. As you can see, we've got it. Now, we click on it, nothing happens, okay? We haven't tied in any logic behind the button, but um, it is functional in the sense that the data is there that we want. However, I'm going to show you one thing. In Access, there is one little trick. You don't need to specify the width of a two-column setup if you hide the first one by putting it to zero. So if you just leave it blank, like I did, it will automatically take up the full width. And the benefit of not specifying it here is that if ever you decide to resize it, it will still take the full width. And otherwise, you'd have to come here and change the dimension that you would have put here because it would be there explicitly. Um, so it's a, it's a choice. Neither one is wrong. I'm just saying there is this little trick in this specific case, the way we're set up, that I can just leave it empty. Next, we always have to give our controls, meaningful names, okay? No one knows what combo eight is. So let's remove that and let's give it a name that makes sense. Combo box for the form, search, user full name. That makes sense to me. It, it's telling me what this combo box is all about. And we can save that. The next thing we need to do, like I said, is we need to tie some logic to this. We need to make it do something. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the after update. So whenever the user makes a selection, after that has been updated, we're going to come and add a little bit of VBA. And the VBA is very simple. Always start off by adding your error handler. Okay, Always. You cannot uh, underestimate the importance of having an error handler. Then we just start off me. We do the record set clone and we do the find first. And what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the user ID, which is equal to and me, my combo box that we just put in there. So we're telling the database, look at the record set clones. And then try to locate 
where the user ID equals the user ID in my combo box. So we'll try to find that record. The next thing we need to do is we should include some logic. I know a lot of people don't, but you really should be coding it protectively to avoid any issues. Well, now you're going to do the re uh, the me record set clone again, but this time we're going to use the no match. And then we're going to do an else and an end if. So what is this? We're saying that first you're going to go and try to find first the uh, an entry that matches. Here is what happens if no match is found. So it didn't find a corresponding record. Well, here would be a good time to do some type of message box. You know, couldn't, couldn't locate the record. Okay. And, you know, you do whatever you want. VB critical uh, or VB okay only. Oops, what did I do? I fat fingered VB okay only. There we go. Okay. Record not found. Okay. Now that's taken care of. If ever there's some type of disconnect, and this does happen, uh, sometimes people don't code, whether it be their form record source properly or the combo box row source properly, that sometimes there's a, a disconnect and it tries to retrieve something that it can't be found in the record source. So this is just a way of protecting yourself. This could also be a great time here to do some type of uh, error logging or uh, notify admin. Because uh, obviously there's a problem with the form that needs to be addressed. But if we get to the else, which we should be, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to tell the form to bookmark, so to go to the record, that corresponds to the record set clone bookmark and that will actively retrieve the record that it performed to find first and located for us now we save this and now we can come and retrieve any record we want at the click of a button and with this also you can just type right and press enter to bring up the record so you can use the keyboard you can use the mouse. The last thing I'm going to just mention here very briefly, if you compare it to my final version, is the default load. I default to a blank record. Why? Because I've found over the years that a lot of users, if you just open the form by default as it is, they will assume that here they can just start entering a new entry. They don't realize they're overwriting an existing entry. Uh, I can't tell you how many uh, companies I've gone into where this has been the case and data disappears because of this. So I found it much more prudent to always open the form by default on a new record. So let's just do that and we'll call it a day. How do we do that? Well, we click our form events and I use the load event code and here it's as simple as a single line do command go to record comma comma go down to ac new record we should always compile to make sure there's no errors realistically i always put error handlers and i'm just going to take up the extra and even on this technically i should have an error handler it costs you nothing to put an error handler and can only save you pain. Compile, save, close out of this guy, and now we open on a blank record. So the user is good to start making an entry or bringing up an existing one so they can edit it as they see fit. And that's it, guys. As easy as that, you can now add a combo box to any a uh, form you'd like to ease data entry. Let's just quickly copy this guy. And just to illustrate 
one more thing quickly. Let's just say I didn't want to use the combo box. I wanted to use the list box. Okay. So let's come here. Something like that. Cancel. Um, we can simplify our lives a little bit. Oh my. Oh, I didn't take it. Okay. Search. I've been having lots of trouble with my computer and copy paste. I don't know why. If anyone has an answer for that, drop me a comment below. I'd love to know what's going on. Um, and as always, I make this black because it's not legible. Otherwise, we can move this guy out of the way. Bring this guy over here. Uh, da, 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 da. I always leave just a bit of a space. Okay. So the next thing, and even this should be black. The next thing I would do, uh, we can retake what we did here. Hopefully the copy will work this time. And we can put it here. And we can just double check it. Does this still make sense? Yes, it does. So we'll close out of that. And get rid of that. And now we can, if we wanted. So we have it. It's bound to the first uh, column, which is the user ID. That's right. Column count, there are two. The width, we can do zero and then full width. And let's just take a look at the result very quickly. And as you can see, we are in business, but it isn't connected to VBA yet. We don't have it doing an action. So then last thing we have to do, and it's the exact same thing, is we're going to use the on click this time, however. And we can literally copy out the code. And just remembering, ah, you see, I just made a mistake. What did I not do? I did not give my control a meaningful name, which we should always do. So LST underscore, give it a meaningful name. Oops. Now I can come add my on click. Now we can take this properly to here, put the proper name so I know what I'm doing, where the error comes from, and it's the exact same thing, except the name of my control here has changed to LST. So it's going to perform the search, and the exact same thing applies. If it doesn't find a match, we want to message to our user, log it, notify the, user, the admin. But if we do find the match like we should, well, then we're going to retrieve the record. And we can now come here and instantaneously switch, but this time by using a list box. So that's it. Uh, let's not go any further than that. This is the basic way of using either a combo box or a list box for retrieving information. Hope this is informative and helps a few of you out there. Uh, we will see you in the next video. If you don't mind, the best way to help me out and support me in continuing to make these videos is to like, subscribe, share, and leave me comments. Be greatly appreciated as always, and we'll see you in the next one, guys.